have production values on a day-to-day -day printing basis. So we are looking at basically one run in Curve. Uh, but as I mentioned before, Curve 2 now has the ability to handle multiple runs at a time. I guess I could quickly show you the last, the last tab here is just for notes about any particular run. Just, but when you're looking at one run here, again, this is sort of the single document kind of idea that you do in Curve 1. Now we have the ability to add another run. So you click on the plus button over here on the left. It creates a second run. And I'm going to load in um, another P2P as if it were the results of my second run, okay? And just just because it's not always ever easy to know this kind of thing, if, you, if you're if you a drag and dropper like I am, uh, a lot of the document areas are, are sensitive to dragging and dropping. So for instance, if I drag, if I was in the setup area and I drag a file over, I can drag it over the ink test button, it'll switch to ink test, I can drag it to the calibration, I can drag it to any particular run and it'll switch to that run, and then I can drop it in the measurement area if I want. I can even do it at the G7 verify stage. So for basically, wherever we let you put files, you can just drag all over until it shows the place you want to drop it, and then you can drop it there. So here we are in run two, as selected on the left. Okay. Um, now, this this basically this data set was constructed from the Grackle profile, so it's practically perfect. Right, uh, but you know, hopefully, you know, when you when you did your second run in in uh, in uh, in your G7 process, it came out really well, right? And hopefully, it's great. Uh, but this, there's a few different things that you can do here. We're in run two, and if you look at it without changing anything, it'll be just a document all by itself. What I mean is, it doesn't take into consideration the previous run in any way, and you can see it's asking for a little tiny bit of correction in the shadows but basically none okay but what what we do in curve two here is when you're looking at run two you say it's based on run one okay and that tells curve that all of the calculations should be relative to the first set of curves that were built and that's a big deal there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes when you do that simple selection okay you can see on the left here there's a hierarchical sort of view that appears that run two is inset from run one, so you can see that one is based on the other. Okay, the other thing that changes when you go under analyze is there's a run to run tab, run to run test that appears, and that does a quick comparison from one run to the next, so you can find out just how close the second run was to the first. And these are the these are the metrics that where they should be very very close. This is basically solid ink. Uh, overprints, paper color, etc. And as well, it gives you a delta density number. So if there's a change in density and you think in terms of that when it comes to the press room floor, then you can use that value. But this is a quick test to find out how well one run matches another. And it's very illuminating to look at this. And if you find that your numbers are very different, hopefully, you know, maybe you have the ability to do this, you know, while the, while the press is still running because if, if you find that the numbers are quite different, then your G7 ver um, process isn't going to work out very well. And you probably need to do a second run if that's required to fire up the press again. Um, the, other, the other tabs are similar before. Sorry, Don, you say something? When you're in run to run, it's, delta, it's the delta E between the runs. Yeah. Which is why the ink and paper, paper tab is still in here so that you can find out sort of how your absolute color is. You know, run to run is kind of a relative comparison. And then you jump into ink and paper, and you can find out how your absolute comparison is. In this particular case, it's very low because I'm comparing to Grackle, and I made the P2P25 here from Grackle. So they're not going to be that different. So the G7 and TVI tabs give the same sort of information. How well did I do? And, you know, it, sh it should look a lot better. It does look a lot better because your second run is that much closer to, you know, if the, the good TVI curves you may have been aiming for or the good G7 you may have been aiming for. Uh, but it's an interesting thing to note here. When you go into create curves, you'll see some whacked out curves. And I've already had people asking about this. Well, why is it doing this? I don't understand if it's so good. You know, if the second round is so good, if, if we hit it so closely, why is it still asking for all this correction? And that's because 
it's calculating a set of curves here that are going to replace the first set of curves that it calculated. So it needs to be all of the stuff it wanted before from round one, plus any tuning that came as a result of round two. Now, in this particular case, I have a different data point in there, which is important. I have that 42% data point. Um, but basically, you can see from run to run here that uh, it's asking for pretty much the same kind of correction it has asked for before. Uh, and, and that's what it should do. It should have basically a tuning, an iterative tuning capability as it goes forward. And so if you do subsequent runs, uh, the curve shape will change a little bit as the data from every run tweaks and tunes the curves that are in the that are that are being calculated but they'll probably be similar to the corrections that were asked for from the first run and that's the iterative process taking place and it uh, we've had a number of people confused by it and, and I was at first too I mean the first time I saw it I thought wait a minute what's it doing and then I thought no wait a minute <laughs> this is the way we built it it's supposed to do this so that what was happening under the hood here when you choose based on Really, these two little things, the Analyze tab, which gives you that run-to-run -run capability, and then this, this new way of calculating curves. There's a lot of stuff that goes on under the hood there. And it's done in a way that is, is significantly more accurate than what you could do in Curve 1 uh, based on, like, the Delta method and that sort of stuff. But does anybody have any questions about the iterative method? Okay, because it's kind of a big deal and a big feature in the software. We want to make sure that people are, are clear on how it works and how the pieces fit together. Now, you can add multiple runs here, and if I did another calibration run report, um, it would be for the run that was selected. So if I go into calibration run report, I'll just run one, because this is the sort of thing you might want to leave with the customer if you're doing it on behalf of a customer. And this is the one that says, see how great your press is doing now? We have these funky correction curves down here, but your TVIs are great, your gray balance is great, your NPDC curves are great, and everything's wonderful. And in, the, in this particular report, it mentions the run name is run two, it's based on run one. So it documents what you're doing at every stage. Helps keep it a little more clear, or as clear as possible. You can also rename these. so. Uh, if I want to, I can click on any one of these. Um, I think I can double call it and call it, you know, Golden Run or whatever we want to call it, right? And it'll remember that uh, so that you can remember it. Basically, in the future, if you want to go to, for instance, the G7 Verify stage. Now, in the G7 Verify stage, you choose a run that you want to compare to. Um, you may not... The, the G7 Verify which will be called TVI Verify if you're just doing the TVI mode. Basically, we kind of generically call it the Verify function. Um, basically, it can take any kind of data file, much like the ink test can. So that's the purpose of this. We've had people say, well, why do you have that extra step? I mean, what's the purpose? Why can't I just make another run and put the data in there? And it's like, well, yeah, but when you're making runs, you have to have P2P targets at this point in time. Uh, but when you get to the G7 verify stage, you can put anything in here. Again, you know, press sheet bar or um, uh, ISO target or whatever. So I'm going to drag something in here, and it will compare what I dragged in to, again, the, the, the absolute color aim I was headed for, Grackle or whatnot, as well as G7. And it'll do a quick calculation based on that. And this is intended sort of as what you might call a spot check tool. It's not a full-blown trending and analysis tool, uh, but it is the sort of thing where you can load it up. You can say, our golden run is what we're shooting for for everything that we do. Drop a couple samples in there. How do we do? That kind of thing. So it's pretty straightforward that way.